Today we're going to look at a certain internet famous sum, and that's the sum 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, and so on and so forth. And we're going to show that in some sense, the value of this sum is equal to 1 half. And while this value of the series is not traditionally what it would converge to, are really helpful when it comes to understanding something like the Riemann zeta function. In fact, this famous formula that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, so on and so forth, is minus 1 over 12, which we're not going to talk about that today. We're going to focus on this series and making this formula make sense. And we're going to do that with the notion of Euler convergence. So we can't do that with the notion of regular convergence because, of course, using regular convergence, this series does not converge. So what is Euler convergence? Well, we're going to do it for sequences, but that's okay because you can turn a series into a sequence by looking at a sequence of partial sums. Okay, so the sequence defined by a n is said to Euler converge to a number a if there is a t value between 0 and 1 so that this limit as n goes to infinity of the sum as k goes from 0 to n of the binomial coefficient n choose k times t to the k times 1 minus t to the n minus k finally times a sub k is equal to a. And although we're not using a lot of the techniques that are found in this paper, we are referencing this paper a little bit for part of our proof. Okay, so let's maybe make sure that this idea of Euler convergence can be seen as some sort of generalization of normal convergence. And to be a generalization of normal convergence, everything that normally converges to a certain number should also Euler converge to that number. And that's exactly what we're going to prove here. But in fact, by considering the sequence bn, which is a minus an, we only really need to consider sequences that converge to zero. And that's not super clear, but I think it's clear enough that I can leave it as a homework exercise. And now let's launch into the proof. So since we know the limit as n goes to infinity of b sub n equals zero, given epsilon bigger than zero, there is a natural number which I'll call capital N such that the absolute value of b sub n is less than epsilon for all little n bigger than or equal to capital N. That's just the precise definition of this limit as n going to infinity of b sub n equals zero. And now let's consider the absolute value of the argument of this limit. Okay, so in other words, we're looking at the absolute value of the sum as k goes from 0 to n of our binomial coefficient, our t to the k, our 1 minus t to the n minus k times b sub k. Now, since that's the argument of our limit over here, we'd like to show that this object is as small as possible because... Well, we need this to Euler converge to zero as well since our maybe parent sequence converges to zero. But now I'm gonna use the triangle inequality to bring this absolute value into the b sub k term as I split this sum up. So all of this is gonna be less than or equal to the sum k goes from zero up to capital N minus one. We have our binomial coefficient, our t to the k, our one minus t to the n minus k, and then here we'll have the absolute value of b sub k. And then we're going to have essentially the same thing, but now it's starting at capital N and ending at lowercase n. And we've got, like I said, the same argument. Okay, so now what can we do with all of that? Well, observe that all of those b sub k terms in the second sum are less than epsilon, or I should say their absolute value is less than epsilon. And that's by the way that we've chosen our number capital N. Then we're just left with the, these b sub k terms over here. But observe that there are finitely many of those b sub k terms because we've fixed this capital N. So, well, since there's finitely many, we could just take their maximum. So maybe let's do that right here. So let's set capital M equal to the maximum of 
absolute value B1, absolute value B2, all the way up, absolute value Bn minus one. Okay, so I think that's good, but that means that all of these things right here are less than or equal to capital M. Okay, great. But now I'm gonna use that to push my inequality further. So this is all gonna be less than, I'm gonna take a capital M out front of this, and I've got the sum as k goes from zero up to n minus one, and then I've got my n choose k, my t to the k, my one minus t to the k, and then here I've got plus epsilon times the sum that we have over there. But I'm gonna add in the first terms to that sum so that it starts at zero. So that's gonna push my inequality in the direction that I want it to, so there are no worries about that. Okay, so there we have that. Okay, good. Now, what are we gonna do from there? Well, let's observe that this, k from zero to capital N minus one is a finite sum. And furthermore, we've got this binomial coefficient here and then this exponential type object, actually two exponential type objects. This one right here, the sum as one minus t is raised to the n minus k, this will have a larger and larger and larger exponent as n is approaching infinity. So here we've got, like I said, this is an exponential type object. This is a binomial coefficient, which can be seen kind of like as a factorial type object. So if you take the limit, of those two objects being multiplied, you get a limit of zero. So again, maybe that'll be like a little bit of an addition to this homework exercise. But then since we're summing finitely many things that have a limit that's zero, that means that that whole sum has a limit that's zero as well. Okay, and then, well, let's notice that this sum as k goes from zero to n of our binomial coefficient, our t to the k and our one minus t to the k is actually summable up to t plus one minus t all raised to the n power. It's a binomial expansion of that. But observe that that's just one to the n power. In other words, that's just one. But now bringing the limit down of this entire inequality, we see that the limit as, ca as little n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the sum as k goes from zero to n of n choose k, t to the k, one minus t to the n minus k times b sub k is less than epsilon. And that's because it's gonna be less than the limit of this plus that object over there which we showed was equal to epsilon. But the limit of this is zero making the whole thing less than epsilon. But the only non-negative number, notice that this is most definitely a non-negative number, which is strictly less than epsilon, is the number zero. So that essentially finishes it all off and shows us that the limit as n goes to infinity of all of this stuff is equal to zero. But that's the condition for our bn sequence to Euler converge to zero. And then by this little homework exercise that I assigned at the beginning, that means that any sequence that converges also Euler converges. And in addition, it Euler converges to the same value that it converges to. And so uh, importantly, this means that this Euler convergence can be seen as some sort of generalization of normal convergence. Okay, so now that we've got all of this taken care of, let's maybe jump into our question over here. Okay, so how can we apply this notion of Euler convergence to our series one minus one plus one minus one, so on and so forth? Well, I think here's the way to do it. Let's set a sub zero equal to one, and then a sub one will be one minus one, which is equal to zero. And then a sub two will be one minus one plus one, which is equal to one. And now I think you can see what we're doing here. So a sub n will be n plus one terms. So let's see, let's do one more. a sub three is one minus one plus one minus one, which is zero. And like I said, so on and so forth. But what that tells us is that a sub even numbers, I'll just write that as a sub even is equal to one. And then a sub odd or odd subscripts will give us the number zero. 
Okay, great. And now we'd like to find the Euler limit, if you will, or decide if this new sequence, which is built out of a sequence of partial sums of our series, Euler converges. That means we need to calculate this complicated object over here. So let's do that. We've got our limit as n goes to infinity, and then our sum as k goes from zero up to n of n choose k, and then t to the k, and then one minus t to the n minus k times a sub k. But before I write down what a sub k is, I'd like to note that we could have a nice closed form of it as follows. So let's observe that a sub k is the same thing as one plus minus one to the k over two. Notice if k is even, then that numerator doubles up to two and we get two over two, which is one. If a is odd, then that numerator cancels down to zero. So that is most definitely a way of writing a sub k. And so let's just put that here. So we've got one plus minus one to the k over two. And now I'm gonna split this into two sums those will all be within the same limit. So we've got our limit as n goes to infinity, and then I'm gonna bring maybe a half out in front of the whole limit, because we can most definitely do that. And then our first sum will go from zero to n, and it'll be n choose k, t to the k, one minus t to the n minus k. So that's from the one. And then I'm gonna take the minus one to the k and put it into the t to the k, giving us minus t to the k for the second sum. So let's see, we've got our sum as k goes from zero to n, and then we've got n choose k minus t to the k now, and then one minus t to the n minus k. So we've got something like that. And now, well, we're gonna use binomial expansion formula in order to finish both of these off, but I guess we've used that before, but I just wanna be really thorough and remind everyone how that works. So if we've got A plus B all raised, or maybe we shouldn't use A plus B, let's use X plus Y all raised to the N power. We can expand that as the sum as K goes from zero to N, and then we've got our binomial coefficient N choose K, and then we've got X to the K, Y to the N minus K. So let's observe that this first one is exactly that, where x is equal to t and y is equal to one minus t. And then this second one is exactly that, where x is equal to minus t and y is equal to one minus t. So now we can apply our binomial expansion formula to both of these. So let's see, for the first one, we'll have x plus y all to the n power, but that's gonna be t plus one minus t all raised to the n power. Again, because of what x plus y is. And then the same thing over there, but now x plus y is one minus two t, or I guess it's minus t plus one minus t, but we could put it together to that, all raised to the n power. But now pretty clearly this, t plus one minus t is just equal to one. So we've got one to the n power plus one minus two t all to the n power. But now I'd like to observe the following, and that's since t is on the interval from zero to one by our rule of Euler convergence over here, one minus two t is on the interval from minus one to one, not including minus one or one. But that means if we raise it to the nth power, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller in absolute value, meaning its limit is zero. So we've just argued that the limit of this term is zero. This term is just set at being equal to one. So that means our whole value here is one half. But let's recall that this is the Euler limit, if you will, of the sequence of partial sums of our series over here. And I think that's how we can maybe pretty carefully make sense of this crazy looking formula.